The Darwinian Revolution is generally taken to be one of the key events in the history of Western science. In recent years, however, the very notion of a scientific revolution has come under attack, and in the specific case of Charles Darwin and his origin of species, there are serious questions about the nature of the change, if there was such, and the specifically Darwinian input. This article considers these issues by addressing these questions. Was there a Darwinian revolution? That is, was there a revolution at all? Was there a Darwinian revolution? That is, what was the specific contribution of Charles Darwin? Was there a Darwinian revolution? That is, what was the conceptual nature of what occurred on and around the publication of The Origin? I argue that there was a major change, both scientifically and in a broader metaphysical sense, that Charles Darwin was the major player in the change, although one must qualify the nature and the extent of the change. Looking particularly at things in a broader historical context than just as an immediate event, and that the revolution was complex and we need the insights of rather different philosophies of scientific change to capture the whole phenomenon. In some respects, indeed, the process of analysis is still ongoing and unresolved. Charles Darwin was born in February 12, 1809 in England. Darwin is a British naturalist that explained with evidence on how evolution might have occurred by natural selection. He started to study at the University of Cambridge when he was invited as a naturalist to a great expedition. He boarded the HMS Beagle and spent almost five years traveling several continents starting in South America from which he brought back dozens of life specimens, illustrations, and fossils. Charles Darwin was famous from his book On the Origin of Species, published in 1859. Darwin's theory of evolution entails the following fundamental ideas. Darwin's original contributions were the mechanism of natural selection and copious amounts of evidence for evolutionary change from many sources. He also provided thoughtful explanations of the consequences of evolution for our understanding of the history of life and modern biological diversity. The theory of evolution by natural selection first formulated in Darwin's book on the origin of species in 1859 is the process by which organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits. Changes that allow an organism to better adapt to its environment will help it survive and have more offsprings. These are the three main ideas of Darwin's theory of evolution. Number one, species or population of interbreeding organisms change over time and space. The representatives of species living today differ from those that lived in the recent past and populations in different geographic regions today differ slightly in form or behavior. These differences extend into the fossil record, which provide ample support for this claim. Number 2. All organisms share common ancestors with other organisms. Over time, populations may divide into different species, which share a common ancestral population. Far enough, back in time, any pair of organisms shares a common ancestor. For example, humans shared a common ancestor with chimpanzees about 8 million years ago, with whales about 16 million years ago, and with kangaroos over 100 million years ago. Shared ancestry explains the similarities of organisms that are classified together. Their similarities reflect the inheritance of traits from a common ancestor. Number 3. Evolutionary change is gradual and slow in Darwin's view. This claim was supported by the long episodes of gradual change in organisms in the fossil record and the fact that no naturalist had observed the sudden change in appearance of a new species in Darwin's time. Since then, biologists and paleontologists have documented a broad spectrum of slow to rapid rates of evolutionary change within lineages. 
Darwin's process of natural selection has four components. The first component is variation. Organisms within populations exhibit individual variation in appearance and behavior. These variations may involve body size, hair color, facial markings, voice properties, or number of offsprings. On the other hand, some traits show little to no variation among individuals. For example, the number of eyes in vertebrates. The second component is inheritance. Some traits are consistently passed on from parent to offspring. Such traits are heritable. Whereas some traits are strongly influenced by environmental conditions and show weak heritability. The third component is high rate of population growth. Most populations have more offspring each year than local resources can support, leading to a struggle of resources. Each generation experiences substantial mortality. The fourth and last component, differential survival and reproduction. Individuals possessing traits well suited for the struggle for local resources will contribute more offspring to the next generation. Evolution by natural selection is one of the best substantiated theories in the history of science. Supported by the evidence from a wide variety of scientific disciplines including paleontology, geology, genetics, and developmental biology. The theory has two main points, and it can be described as descent with modification. The theory is sometimes described as survival of the fittest, but that can be misleading refers not to an organism's strength or athletic ability, but rather the ability to survive and reproduce. Natural selection is also capable of much more. Given enough time and enough accumulated changes, natural selection can create entirely new species known as macroevolution. It can turn dinosaurs into birds, amphibious mammals into whales, and the ancestors of apes into humans. Darwin also described a form of natural selection that depends on an organism's success at attracting a mate, a process known as sexual selection. The physical and behavioral changes that make natural selection possible happen at the level of DNA and genes. Such changes are called mutations. Mutations are basically the raw material on which evolution acts. Mutation can be caused by random errors in DNA replication or repair or by chemical or radiation damage. Most times, mutations are either harmful or neutral. But in rare instances, a mutation might prove beneficial to the organism. In this way, natural selection guides the evolutionary process, preserving and adding up the beneficial mutations and rejecting the bad ones.